If you uh, walk into a food processing plant, uh, something that you will immediately notice is that there are a number of pieces of equipment that are being used for a variety of different processes. Equipment for drying, filtration, mixing, evaporation, and so on. These uh, pieces of equipment are connected to each other. Uh, product from one piece of equipment is transferred to another. Now, for the entire operation to operate in an efficient manner, it is necessary, first of all, to know the flow of product. In other words, we would like to trace the flow of product uh, through the entire plant. But also, it is important to determine in uh, quantitative terms what are the mass flow rates of various product streams. So, for example, if you have an evaporator, you have a certain feed, some low concentration liquid going into the evaporator where the product is heated, vapors come out, so we have vapors exiting the evaporator with a certain mass flow rate and also the concentrated product exits the evaporator with a certain mass flow rate. So we can, for example, write down M dot F for mass flow rate of feed, M dot V for mass flow rate of vapors, and M dot P uh, for the concentrated uh, product. So one of the things that is important is to conduct a what is called a total material balance. In other words, that mass of uh, different streams that are going in or out of a particular process, either a one piece of equipment or a combination of different uh, pieces of equipment. In addition, we can also do what is called a component analysis. Since the streams have a certain composition, uh, it has various components. So, for example, we can look at the solid content of the feed and the solid content of the concentrated product by using symbol XF uh, for the solid content of feed, XP for solid content of the concentrated stream. So by conducting total material balance or the component balance, we can get some valuable information about product flow inside the food processing plant. Let's uh, look at a important law from physical sciences that helps us to evaluate food processing operations. The law simply states that Mass can be neither created nor destroyed. However, its composition can be altered from one form to another. Now, the first statement here is always true except for nuclear reactions. And of course, we are not dealing with those reactions uh, in, in food processing. The second statement uh, suggests that if there is a chemical reaction, uh, there may be a change in composition of the reactants and or the products. Uh, so the composition may be different due to the ch a chemical reaction uh, for reactants and products, but the total mass of the system will remain the same. Of course, if uh, we don't have any chemical reaction, then both mass and composition will remain the same. Let's uh, look at a, uh, a simple example. Uh, we have a tank here and uh, we have uh, a pipe uh, filling up the tank and uh, we have water, let's say, going into the tank at a rate of uh, one kilogram per second and also water exits from the tank at one kilogram per second uh, and a certain level uh, of water is maintained in the tank. Uh, obviously, if the uh, rate of inlet and exit is the same, uh, then there won't be any change in the level. Uh, on the other hand, if uh, we have a higher rate of flow from the tank, uh, obviously the, the level will go down. Uh, on the other hand, if the rate of exit uh, is lower than the inlet, then uh, the level will increase. So we can uh, formulate a, an equation 
from this observation and the equation will be uh, something like this in words that a rate of mass entering through the boundary of a system uh, so we will have a boundary drawn around this uh, tank so rate of mass entering through the boundary of system equals the rate of mass exiting through that system boundary plus rate of mass accumulation within the system so if the rate of mass accumulation or depletion is zero then of course the rate of mass entering through the boundary uh, of the system will be same as rate of mass exiting uh, through that system boundary as we see in this tank if the level remains the same uh, we have both the rate going in one kilogram per second is the same as the rate going out one kilogram per second now we can make this uh, formulation more general we could certainly have more than one inlet to the system uh, so there could be more uh, more than one inlet pipes going into the tank and more than one pipes going out of the tank so we can write m dot inlet where m dot represents the mass flow rate so anytime we have a rate we put a dot uh, above the symbol uh, so m dot inlet equals a summation of uh, i is equal to 1 to n uh, for m dot i uh, so i represents the number of inlets the same thing we can do uh, for the rate of mass uh, that is exiting the system uh, so we have m dot exit equals summation and we can call this time e equals 1 through p and it's m dot e uh, where m dot e represents the mass flow rate uh, for the exit now the rate of mass accumulation we can write as m dot accumulation equals dm system over dt so what that e expression tells us is that uh, there is going to be a certain accumulation over time and that accumulation is dm over dt uh, now if we substitute these into our uh, word equation we get m dot inlet minus m dot exit equals dm system over dt now this equation is what we will then use in our analysis of various uh, food processing systems uh, so first we will look at uh, some of the important steps that you should uh, take to develop a material balance in, in a food processing plant so here are the steps uh, that are important to follow uh, so that we have an organized way of conducting a material balance so first we want to collect all the known data that is available related to the mass and the composition of various inlet and exit streams from that particular piece of equipment and this information is generally available in the statement of the problem two we will draw a what is called a block diagram uh, this is just a simple uh, blocks drawn uh, to indicate the process with inlet and exit streams that are identified in that diagram we will use arrows to indicate a stream going into the equipment uh, as well as an arrow that shows the exit from that piece of equipment and we will draw a system boundary around that piece of equipment that we are trying to uh, conduct a material balance on now if in a process there are a number of pieces of equipment then it is important that the system boundary encloses all those pieces of equipment three we will write all the available data that is given for example in the uh, problem statement on the block diagram these uh, data could involve uh, the uh, flow rate or the composition and so on and four we select a 
suitable basis for the calculations. Now the basis can be uh, in terms of mass or it could be time. For example, we may be interested in finding out the material balance uh, that is conducted for one hour of operation. Or it may be based on, for example, one kilogram of the inlet product stream. Uh, again, this will become clear when we look at an example. The uh, selection of this uh, basis is uh, usually done uh, to make the calculations uh, more convenient. Five, we will use the mass balance equation to write our material balances for each of the unknown that are there in the problem. Since we will be solving simultaneous equations, for each unknown we will need an independent uh, material balance equation. Six, we will then solve our material balances which will be in terms of simultaneous equations and from there we will determine the unknown or the unknowns uh, in the problem.